Good evening, jazz fans. How you doing out there? It's Friday. We made it through the week, and uh, we're about to hear some great music. Um, on behalf of the Arts and Literature Laboratory, the Madison Music Collective, and our host here at Wisconsin Union Theater, I want to welcome you to the third of three fall dig jazz concerts, live stream concerts. And we're coming to you live from Shannon Hall here in the Wisconsin Union Theater. My name is Nick Moran. I'm your host for this evening, and it's my pleasure to bring you some amazing music um, from our local jazz musician community. Before we get to this music, I, I have to thank some sponsors, and I have some more information for you. Um, and, uh, and so bear with us, and then we'll get to the music. But we definitely want to thank our sponsors for making this possible. Um, so please help me in thanking our presenting sponsors, the Madison Music Collective, the Arts and Literature Laboratory, Janice Galleries, and of course, our wonderful host here at Wisconsin Union Theater. Thank you. We'd also like to thank um, our sponsors that help us also make this possible, Dane Arts, with additional funds from the Anderson Anders Manufacturing Company Foundation, the Evu Foundation Incorporated, the charitable arm of the Capital Times, the W. Jerome Frouchy Foundation, and the, Pro and the Pleasant T. Rowland Foundation, Madison Arts Commission, with additional funds from Wisconsin Arts Board, and the John and Carolyn Peterson Charitable Foundation. We'd also like to thank our community radio station, uh, 89.9 FM WORT, uh, for their continued support of all things jazz. We'd also like to thank our tech crew here, uh, the wonderful crew here at Wisconsin Union Theater, who've just opened up this spot for us and, and always make us feel at home. We'd also like to thank uh, Bear uh, Sound and Madison Pro Audio. Um, this live stream is interactive. Um, you know, we don't have an audience here that we can hear the applause. But your comments and your uh, emojis, your heart emojis, uh, whatever you got, we'll take. And, uh, and it really helps us, you know, know that you're out there. Um, and also your comments, too. Um, also, you will have an opportunity to ask questions to, to Johannes, the, um, our special guest tonight. And, uh, and so if you want those questions heard, make sure you put those in the comments, and we will uh, bring up what we can at the top of our second set. Um, we also need your support to make these series possible in the future. So there's a donation link that you should see on your, your screen right now. Um, you can donate to the Arts and Literature Laboratory PayPal and Venmo. Uh, and that, again, that helps us fund these concerts. These are all um, fair paying uh, opportunities for our musician community, and uh, we want to continue to make them possible. Um, there's also a couple other things. I'd like you to uh, consider becoming a member for the Madison Music Collective. They're accepting new members right now, and you can become a, uh, a donating member. Um, also, there is a survey that you'll see the link in the comments either in momentarily. And this survey uh, is for UW students and the public out there. It's for the Wisconsin Union Theater, and they just want to know your engagement in these online events. So please, consider filling out that survey and give us that feedback. That feedback is so important for us. Okay. Oh, I'm also, before we go into the music, I want to, uh, to, I'm happy to announce that we will actually be continuing our Dig Jazz series in 2020 uh, with a winter Dig Jazz series. So we have three upcoming concerts for you. It's kind of a surprise. Uh, and uh, so starting on November 20th, we'll have a double bill with uh, jazz poetry from Flow Poetry as well as uh, a group of um, present and former UW jazz students, uh, music students, uh, a group called Two Jackets. And that'll be on Nove Friday, November 20th. On Friday, December 4th, you can hear Juan Tomas Martinez Paris and his Acoplados Latin project. Um, and, you will at the, and also on December 18th, you'll hear Dave Cooper's Drift. So again, mark those on your calendar. Follow our pages at the Madison Music Collective and the Arts and Literature Laboratory for more information on those shows. Okay, I think that was enough talking. What do you think? Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I am really pleased to bring you this next act. Um, he is the director of jazz studies here at UW-Madison, um, a great composer, a, a pianist, and, uh, and a great dad as well. Um, it, this is a totally new project, so you are hearing this with me for the first time, which is also really exciting. So at home, put your hands together for Johannes Wallman, New Quintet. Thank you, Nick. Um, we're almost going to jump in uh, you know, with the music. I just wanted to announce this first piece. Earlier this year, uh, one of the uh, uh, giants of jazz piano uh, passed away, and uh, he was probably my single biggest influence. Uh, well, he sh certainly was my single biggest influence on the instrument. And uh, uh, in honor of him, I wrote this piece. Um, uh, this is uh, dedicated to the great McCoy Tyner, and this piece is called McCoy.
Thank you. It's a great pleasure to uh, um, play this play this music for you. This is new music, um, almost all of it written uh, in the last few months. Um, some of it uh, pandemic inspired, some of it uh, decidedly not so. Uh, and try uh, to uh, present you with a bunch of uh, sort of different moods throughout the evening. And that first one, um, if you tuned in late, in homage to the great McCoy Tyner. Um, and that featured uh, John Christensen on the bass yeah. and Sherelle Cassidy on alto saxophone. Yeah. And um, I'm going to introduce the rest of the band in a moment. Uh, this next piece um, has a title that can be uh, uh, construed to be somewhat ominous in nature. It is not intended to be that at all, though this piece is called Precarious Towers. And um, and I wrote this uh, inspired by uh, yeah by my daughter Clea, who is uh, now three years old, who loves Duplo Legos, and uh, for a while now has been building ever more precarious and ornate and baroque Lego Duplo towers, um, and then eventually takes great joy in uh, seeing them collapse under their own weight. And it's a wonderful lesson about hubris and uh, architecture and so on. So this piece is entitled Precarious Towers. Thank you. 
So that was inspired by the uh, by the joyful side of um, of life and the pandemic. So many of us um, have uh, gotten to spend way more time than we ever expected to with our families and and our children, and it, and it's been exhausting, but it's also been absolute joy. So that was uh, yeah, precarious towers, inspired by Legos. Um, early on in the pandemic. Uh, this, the next piece is the first piece that I, uh, you know, that I wrote early on in the pandemic, just weeks into it, uh, when we all felt this uh, uh, very much sense of uh, um, existential dread and uh, um, anxiety and so on. And uh, many of us mostly spend our days inside. Uh, it's before the summer, so here in Wisconsin, it was still pretty cold, and um, and there just wasn't anywhere. You know, there's no no cars on the street, nobody out on the sidewalks, so on. As we're trying to figure out what was, what was going on on and how we should live our lives in response. So this next piece is entitled, Quiet Out There. Thank you. 
I should introduce the rest of the band. On drums, that was Devin Dropka who took us from quiet out there into the next as of yet untitled piece and play that beautiful transition in there. Devin Dropka on the drums. Yeah, Devin. And his and my partner on percussion or percussive instruments of one kind or another on the vibraphone, Mitch China. Okay, we're gonna play a little trio tune for you. This one also is inspired by another of my very favorite pianists. Um, I probably don't need to announce it. I, I think these uh, things are fairly obvious, but this is an homage to the great Thelonious Monk. This is titled later that year.
We're going to take, uh, well, we're going to play one more piece for you, and then we're going to take a break, which gives you an opportunity to go to your refrigerator and get another beverage, tip your bartender, all that kind of stuff. Um, this is the first time that I, um, we've all been on the same stage together. I, I've been playing for a long, yeah, for a long time now, for last eight years, um, on and off, a lot of times on, sometimes some stretches off, too long. This one's been too long. Um, but I've been playing with these two, uh, these two fine musicians uh, for quite a while now, and uh, Devin Dropka on drums and John Christensen on the bass, and I'm once again delighted to like, play this new music with them. Um, the other two people I don't get to play with anywhere near as much, and they're more recent additions, and that's why it's the Johannes Wallman new quintet, because this is really the first time we've played together, and this is all new, you know, almost all of the music is written specifically with these people in mind, and, um, and this instrumentation, and, you know, and, and so on. So I'm delighted to be able to, to have the opportunity to bring this uh, to you. On, um, on alto sax, Cheryl Cassidy, and on vibraphone, Mitch Shiner. And this next piece is a little bit of an exception. Um, it's a piece that I wrote before I started playing with Mitch and with Sherelle. Um, but, and, I've, and it's the only piece in this catalog that everybody here has played with me once, at least once before, which is really convenient when uh, uh, rehearsal time is at an absolute premium, as you can imagine. Um, right now, we're coming to you from an 1,100-seat theater. Um, so we have a lot of cubic footage here to keep us you know, of air to keep us safe, but rehearsal spaces don't always offer that. So, um, uh, yeah, it's something else I had to keep in mind when writing this music. And uh, to have a piece that we've played before that um, you know we're all now in some way or another um, is a nice addition, and it's something I wanted to share with you because it's uh, it's a piece I like playing with these uh, people. This is called Modified.
Mitch Heine, vibraphone, Charlotte Cassidy, alto saxophone, Devin Dropka, drums, John Christensen, bass. My name is Johannes Wallman. Nick Moran. That was incredible. Uh, at home, one more round of applause for, for Johannes Wallman, new quintet. Uh, that was amazing. Um, so yeah, we're going to take a 15-minute break. It's actually going to be a 15-minute break, which, as Johannes mentioned, will allow you to get a drink, um, stretch out a little bit. And also, we want to encourage you to share this if you're enjoying just share this video with your with your peers um, so we can get more viewers out there. Um, also, this is your chance to comment and ask the artist questions. So in this 15-minute break, if you have a question for Johannes and this uh, wonderful quintet, please do so, and we will uh, address that at the top of the second set. Um, thank you so much for... for uh, also, this will give you a chance to, uh, to make a donation. And so we appreciate the donations that have already been made. Thank you so much for your support of this uh, series. But we could definitely use more support. So if you're considering a donation, this break will be a perfect opportunity. We'll be right back uh, live from Shannon Hall. Thank you. We're going to take a short break. Thank you, everybody. Thank you very much. We'll be back in 10 minutes. Thank you. Thank you. 
All right, welcome back to the top of the second set. I hope you've been enjoying this this great set by Johannes Wallman, new quintet. Um, so, you know, this was your opportunity to ask questions, and, you know, I didn't see any questions on here. Um, other than we did have someone comment during the first set of who needs tom-toms. And we know that Devin does not need tom-toms. <laughs> I don't know. I think there wasn't a question mark. It was more of like a statement, like, who needs tom-toms? Um, so I guess it's up to me to think of a question. And, and you know, one thing I think of, uh, Johannes, is, you know, we've seen you in so many different formats, um, you know, from a big band project to small group projects. Why this? Why this instrumentation? What was your inspiration for this? Well, when, when you change... When I change something up, um, it gives me new ideas, things that might not have worked for the previous personnel, for the previous uh, size ensemble, uh, the instruments involved, and so on. So uh, sometimes it means I can dust off compositions that I wrote before that didn't really work for, it, for a different project. And uh, um, other times it means I can write, write some new music, which was the idea behind this one. And uh, like I said before, I've played with Devin and John a ton, so that you know, that's the continuity in that. But I, you know, but I started realizing um, some time ago that uh, every one of my previous projects had either a tenor saxophone or a trumpet or a trombone or some combination of that. All of those are B-flat instruments, and they essentially sort of play in the same range, plus or minus an octave. And the alto saxophone kind of sits in between the you know the the trumpet and the tenor saxophone, and um, and it was a little bit of an awkward fit. Like you know, you know the few times I did play with alto saxophonists, uh, the music sort of um, you know was either a little too high on the instrument or a little too low, or they had to like you know make an octave jump somewhere along the way. So I wanted to write some new music to um, you know just have me here in a different register. And that was you know, one idea behind it. The other one is that um, sort of on a whim, uh, a couple of years ago, I booked a, uh, a, a gig at Cafe Coda, and, uh, and I set out to do something without, um, without bass. Um, sorry, Nick. Sorry, yeah, John. Man, what's up with that? <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> Again, to kind of just for, force my playing into, into a different thing. And, um, I, and I thought, well, if I don't have bass, I'm going to need some different reinforcements. And I uh, um, and wanted to kind of build on the, um, the, the likeness of, the, of um, you know, the piano being a percussion instrument, a percussive instrument. There's strings, but it's also you know, a percussion instrument. With, the strings are being hit by hammers. And um, yeah, so for, for that, I thought it'd be nice to have some extra harmony and to have more percussion. And um, you know, and I did this gig with Devin and Mitch and a wonderful trumpet player, Jimmy Braywick. Uh, and uh, some of you may have heard this on Ward FM yesterday. We happened to cap capture it live. And as Shout I, out to Ward. Yeah, and as I, as I, listened, as I listened back to it um, you know, uh, when I got the recording, um, I thought like, oh my goodness, that, yeah, that was a fun gig. I mean, we knew it that evening and then also, you know, the, 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 the tape confirmed it. Um, it's, it's this wonderful um, opportunity to, to really interact with these players um, in, in a great way. So then, you know, the, the concept behind the new quintet was to sort of combine those two things and see where it, lead, it would lead me as a, as a writer and where it would, what kind of chemistry it would, it would create for us. That's awesome. And you also wrote music that didn't include toms, right? So that, that helped. <laughs> No, sorry. So, you know, you know one, one of the wild things about, I, I have to say, I'm so disappointed with drummers. I mean, all, 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 all of you. Aren't we all? <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, I, the drums are, are this wonderfully modular instrument that you could you know, add or subtract, like really anything from. And if you look at you know, the drum set early on in jazz, you know, uh, yeah, gigantic bass drums and then, you know, bells and wood blocks and little china cymbals and so on. And everybody's been creative and had these incredible setups. And then at some point, the drum set sort of got codified, and everybody brings, you know, bass drum, snare drum, right cymbal, hi-hat, and toms, <laughs> and so on. And, uh, you know, I, and, and Devin is moving in a different direction, so I, I, I very much respect that. That's one thing I've always loved about Devin Drop, because he's an innovator, and... Uh Yes. All right. Well, that I think that that one question was enough for a whole Q&A session. Um, but before we get started with this music, I do want to take uh, this opportunity to thank one more time our sponsors that make this event possible. Um, so please help me in thanking the Madison Music Collective, the Arts and Literature Laboratory, um, our wonderful host here with the Wisconsin Union Theater. We'd like to thank Janice Galleries for their continued support of this series. Uh, we'd also like to thank Dane Arts, 
with additional funds from the Andrus Manufacturing Company Foundation, the Evu Foundation Incorporated, the charitable arm of the Capital Times, the W. Jerome Frouchy Foundation, and the Pleasant T. Rowland Foundation, the Madison Arts Commission with additional funds from the Wisconsin Arts Board, and the John and Carolyn Peterson Charitable Foundation. We'd also like to thank our community radio station, uh, 89.9 FM, and that's that show you were talking about was on Strictly Jazz Sounds, which is a Thursday uh, show, and that's in the archives, I'm sure, on WRTFM.org. Um, and we'd also like to thank our wonderful crew here at Wisconsin Union Theater. Our lighting has been amazing. Uh, we also want to thank uh, Andrew LaValle from Bear Sound, and we want to thank Madison Pro Audio um, for this live stream. All right, here we go for the second set. Please put your hands together, ladies and gentlemen, for Johannes Wallman, New Quintet. All right, we're going to start this second set. Um, the first tune is going to, it's a, a piece of mine that, um, that I wrote uh, inspired by um, and, as, and as an homage to, uh, uh, to this wonderful place we live in, uh, Wisconsin, Madison, Wisconsin. Uh, I love it here, and I'm really glad to be here. And uh, soon after moving here eight years ago, uh, I heard about this tradition that I kind of went like, what? That's... I don't believe it. That's not, that sounds crazy. Um, the meat raffle. <laughs> I don't know what's up with that. That's that's super weird. But I still think it's weird. But it's also uh, delightful and charming. And this piece is called Saturday Night Meat Raffle.
That was a tune very much inspired by the Great American Songbook and all the uh, uh, beautiful compositions that we, uh, you know, that, that make up the standard jazz repertoire. And it's something that I was uh, teaching and working on with uh, my jazz theory and composition students. And I wrote this tune, uh, well, the beginning of this tune is a composition exercise. I'd bring in the first eight measures and uh, and see if they if they could write the rest of the tune in that style. And they did pretty good. But along the way, I also re realized that I sort of actually had the sound of the entire tune in my head, even though I'd only written the first eight measures. And, um, you know, it's not, it's not really fair to expect other people to, you know, now what's in your head. So I should really just write it all out. And um, and I did, and, um, that, and that's the tune. And it's called uh, Try try to remember now we're going to play a couple we're going to play a couple of pieces we got three more for you we're going to play a couple of pieces uh that some of you may have already heard in in madison they're from this year or from the last 12 months but i i, I wrote them um as i was gearing up for another concert um the the, the last time i got to um play on a big stage uh, back in February, and, um, and and we played one of these pieces um, with a large string section, and it worked really beautifully, but I also wanted to play it without the big string section, and this piece is called December, because I wrote it back in December, so that's all there is to that. Um, and then we're going to play from that same, uh, you yeah, from, from that same concert, revisit another piece um, entitled Catch the Red Car, and uh, uh, this is the second piece on this uh, on, on this concert, inspired by uh, my uh, preschool-aged daughter, who is also a terrible back backseat driver, and always tells me to catch up with other cars while I'm driving. And um, you know, tra traffic rules uh, be damned. So, uh, first December, and then catch the red car.
Did we catch it? <laughs> catch the red car. Uh, we're going to play one more piece for you, but first I'd like to introduce the band one last time uh, on vibraphone, Mitch China. We can hear you clap through the internet. This is awesome. Really yeah. Unless that's doing skipping again. Yeah, that could be it too. On saxophone, Sherelle Cassidy. Woo! On drums, Devin Dropko. Just a few. More cymbals. Tonight. Yeah, my, yeah on, on, on cymbals and a few drums. <laughs> <laughs> on the bass, John Christensen. My name, and you know, on piano and compositions, my name is uh, Johannes Wallman. Thank you. To, and uh, I'd like to you know, thank all the, you know, all the sponsors and all the people who um, you know, worked really hard at putting together this wonderful series. Um, you know, Nick mentioned them all at the beginning of each set, and I'm not going to be able to remember all the names. I don't want to leave anyone out. but. Uh, uh, they all play a really crucial role in putting this together. So, um, uh, big, big round of applause for them from the band. So, okay, we got we got one more piece. Uh, and this one is uh, fresh, hot, hot off the press. Um, in fact, I was emailing these parts to the other musicians last night, well after they'd gotten all the rest of the music, and uh, and then this morning I came in with some new parts because I found that like yeah, there was. There were a few mistakes from what uh, I'd imagined. So I'm still writing much of music, and like everybody else, I'm you know, inspired by uh, and, and influenced by current events. Um, so I titled this piece, Defeat and Imprison the Con Man Strong Man. So. Don't forget to vote. Yeah, go ahead and vote. Um, all right, so you know, Johannes Wallman, New Quintet, Defeat and Imprison the Con Man Strong Man.
Wow. One more time, uh, jazz fans out there, for Johannes Wallman, new quintet. That was incredible. That was incredible. Um, so that concludes our fall 2020 Dig Jazz concert series. Uh, again, we want to thank our presenting sponsors, the Arts and Literature Laboratory, the Madison Music Collective, our wonderful hosts here at Wisconsin Union Theaters, and Janice Galleries for their support. Um, thank you again for your donations, for your uh, involvement, your comments, your heart emojis. I, I'm sure these musicians will appreciate watching it back and seeing what you were saying. So thank you for that. Keep in mind, we are coming back to you for a winter jazz series, dig jazz series, um, starting on November 20th. And we'll be coming live from uh, the North Street Cabaret with a double bill, uh, poetry by Flow Poetry, and two jackets. Um, then we'll be streaming from live from my house on uh, on December fourth uh, with uh, Juan Tomas Paris, um, Juan Tomas Martinez Paris, and his Acoplados Latin project. And we'll finish our winter series on December eighteenth with David Cooper and uh, Drift, his project. So thank you so much. Um, also, we won't see you until after the election. So please make sure that you vote uh, before or on November third. Um, make your voice heard. We need it now more than ever. Um, so don't forget to vote. Thank you so much. We'll see you next time. Buenas noches. <laughs>